Which is more important? The continued evidence stacking up against the Bidens and allegations of pay to play and influence peddling? Or the stack of headlines showing that former President Donald Trump is very much in a lot of hot water? Want to hear from you now at 217-629-7970. Again, 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop. And you can also email bishoponair at gmail.com. Or you can uh, find me on Twitter or X, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and message us that way as well. Uh, but here's some of the headlines. Hunter Biden sold illusion of access to his father, former business partner tells con- Congress. Biden had casual conversations conversations with Sun's business associates on multiple occasions, Devin Archer tells lawmakers. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, an ongoing case where you've got members of the uh, Republican uh, caucus in the U.S. House that are holding hearings with oversight authority uh, into questions of Hunter Biden's business dealings and what Joe Biden, the president, knew uh, at the time he was vice president. And this while you've got the headlines against uh, former Former President Donald Trump, Mar-a-Lago manager, appears in court days after the Justice Department sent a subpoena for video footage. Mar-a-Lago, uh, the Trump uh, organization, prosecutors say Carlos de Oliveira uh, asked for information technology staffers how long the server retained footage uh, because the boss wanted it deleted. Uh, so that's an ongoing uh, headline. Trump employee released on bond and classified documents case. Georgia election probe won't be tossed, a judge rules. Uh, so again, just some of the other headlines uh, against the former president, Donald Trump. Uh, but uh, let's get into uh, really, I think, what uh, dominated a lot of headlines yesterday outside of uh, the stack of headlines against uh, the former president. Let's talk about uh, Devin Archer and uh, the testimony he provided behind closed doors. Uh, U.S. Representative Jamie Comer, he posted on Twitter, Devin Archer's testimony confirms Joe Biden lied when he said that he had no knowledge of his son's business dealings and was not involved. Joe Biden was the brand and he joined Hunter's dinners with foreign associates in person or by phone over 20 times. And he links to some of the testimony here. Devin Archer's testimony today confirms Joe Biden lied to the American people when he said he had no knowledge about his son's business dealings and was not involved. Joe Biden was the brand and his son sold around the world to enrich the Biden family. When Joe Biden was vice president of the United States, he joined Hunter Biden's dinners with his foreign business associates in person or by speakerphone over 20 times when Burisma's owner facing pressure from the Ukrainian prosecutor investigating the company for corruption, Archer testified that Burisma executives asked Hunter to call D.C. after a Burisma board meeting in Dubai. Why did Joe Biden lie to the American people about his family's business dealings and his involvement? It begs the question what else he's hiding from the American people. The House Committee on Oversight and Accountability will continue to follow the Biden's money trail and interview witnesses to determine whether foreign actors targeted the Bidens. President Biden is compromised and corrupt and our national security is threatened. So obviously some pretty uh, harsh rhetoric there. Uh, but after that closed door testimony, you had uh, you know the Republicans involved in this, uh, including Comer. Uh, here he is talking with uh, Real America's Voice and John Solomon from Just the News, uh, laying out uh, what they ultimately heard from Devin Archer behind closed doors. And there's this bombshell that came out. I don't think I was even ready for to hear this today. But in December 2015, just a few short days before Joe Biden left for Kiev and started the process of leveraging a billion dollars in U.S. loan guarantees to force the firing of the Ukrainian general prosecutor, his name is Victor Shokin, uh, Devin Archer told you today that Hunter Biden was being pressured by Burisma to do something about this prosecutor because he wouldn't stop investigating the company for corruption. How big a revelation is it that the, bet, the action that Joe Biden took a few days later was actually what Hunter Biden's client was looking for? It's just unbelievable, John. I mean, look, what Archer said today was exactly what you just reported. We brought forward a few weeks ago an FBI document that alleged that Joe Biden was off involved in a bribery scheme for this very scenario. Now we know, despite Joe Biden saying he never had any knowledge of any of this, 
that he regularly spoke on the phone with the owners of these companies. When in the American history as a vice president ever taken an active role and demanded that a prosecutor be fired in a foreign country for simply investigating a, a business that was domiciled in that foreign country. Never, John. Yeah. I mean, the, the evidence continues to mount that the real quid pro quo pertaining to Ukraine and Burisma was Joe Biden. So where do we go from here? Uh, looks like you could see some kind of impeachment inquiry uh, based off of this uh, testimony that Archer, um, uh, Devin Archer provided to the uh, House committee behind closed doors. And uh, we're expecting to get a transcript at some point. But uh, Republicans uh, really looking and uh, chomping at the bit, so to speak, uh, to, to get this thing uh, going with more evidence and more interviews. Uh, now, of course, uh, an impeachment inquiry is not an impeachment. An impeachment inquiry just simply opens the door for the U.S. House to have much greater leverage in demanding documents and testimony as they continue to investigate this. But up to this point, it's really been uh, an issue of, well, all these allegations against Hunter Biden. Everybody knows Hunter Biden is not a good person. He's a former drug addict. He's got these gun charging and he's got tax problems. But nothing had to do with Biden. Nothing had to do with Biden. And even Biden himself saying time and again he had knew nothing of uh, his son's business dealings. But Devin Archer, a close friend of Hunter Biden and the Biden family, uh, sharing behind closed doors and testimony that uh, the House Republican Republicans are talking, uh, say that uh, he ultimately uh, did know and had phone calls with uh, the business associates uh, connected to Hunter Biden. Uh, so where do we go from here? Um, of course, uh, you know, the question is how this impacts politics. Uh, we'll get to your phone calls in a moment, I promise, here at 217-629-7970. Again, 217-629-7970. But here is uh, Congressman um, Goldman, uh, who was one of the people who uh, prosecuted Trump in the House uh, whenever he was impeached. And uh, he was part of the uh, House committee, closed door as a Democrat. He came out and talked to the media. Here's some of what he had to say uh, yesterday after that uh, closed door hearing. We just finished the two hours of Republican questioning. Um, and I think it is safe to say that after yet another two hours, there still is no connection of any of Hunter Biden's business dealings with President Biden. Um, the witness uh, indicated that uh, Hunter spoke to his father every day and um, approximately 20 times over the course of 10 year relationship, um, Hunter may have put his father uh, on the, the phone with any number of different people, and they never once spoke about any business dealings. As he described it, it was all casual conversation, niceties, the weather, what's going on. There wasn't a single conversation about any of the business dealings that Hunter had. Perhaps the most interesting thing that he said is that Burisma believed that they had the Prosecutor General Shokin in their pocket. They had control over him, and they were concerned that if he was removed from office, that that would be very bad for Burisma. Of course, as we all know, the allegation, to the extent that there still are allegations that have not been debunked related to Burisma, is that Vice President Biden advocated for official U.S. policy to remove, to have Ukraine remove Prosecutor General Shokin. So, again, that's just some of the uh, the allegation here. And I want to hear from you now at 217-629-7970. The Democrats seeming to downplay uh, the the significance of Devin Archer's testimony. But what do you think? And what do you think is more significant here? Uh, the mounting allegations against the Bidens or the headlines of continued uh, legal troubles that the former president's getting involved in? And these are two of what's expected to be on the ticket for 2024. Uh, unbelievable where we're at, but good morning. You're on WMAY, your thoughts. Good morning. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's crazy that, you know, when was it uh, three, four years ago, five years ago, we were on the other side of this when they were wanting to prosecute, uh, when they were impeaching Trump. 
and now they're going to try to impeach Biden. And it's, it, two people can hear the exact same thing, I guess, and hear two completely different stories. It just, it just amazes me, the interpretation of the Democrats' version and the Republicans' version. I mean, the only thing really to do for us to really find out the truth is to read the transcripts, but preferably listen to the uh, testimony. But, you know, I have a job, and I can't sit and listen to somebody testify for however many hours. I guess only a couple hours yesterday. But uh, just because you need the inflection, you need, you need the context of when they're speaking. Reading, I don't think, always brings the context out, especially if it's just transcripts. So, I don't know. I, I think it's ridiculous. I think if you're going to prosecute Trump, you need to pursue Biden in the same fashion. But it's not going to happen. Uh, Biden will... The, 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 uh, the House may vote for impeachment, but the Senate's not going to allow it. So... It's going to be the same thing. That nobody's going to get impeached. Nothing's going to change. We're going to have two people that are potential criminals running for office in 2024. Is what it's going to come down to. So, <laughs> well, some would say, "What's new?" <laughs> Anywhere, yeah, not yeah, just well, for not just for president, but any office, right? I mean, what's well, yeah, new? The sad thing is, the, the sad thing is I, I mean, we've known for years that there's always things going on behind the scenes. I mean, it's. It's just like war has gotten a lot uglier since Vietnam and since we started embedding uh, embedding reporters in, in combat. That makes war a lot uglier, and nobody likes it anymore, but it's necessary. Now we've got Twitter and Facebook, and we know everything going on within a minute, you know, and the news cycle rolls over every 24 hours, and we're divided. We've got a couple news companies that are conservative. we got a few news companies, the majority of news companies, that are feeding liberal crap out to people. And uh, the conservatives need to listen to the liberal crap, and the liberals need to listen to the conservative crap. Maybe we can come together somewhere in the middle. Who knows? We'll, we'll watch understand. closely. All right, I appreciate the call, and you can chime in as well, 217-629-7970. It is fascinating, though, uh, to hear some of the Democrats, including uh, Adam Schiff, uh, who's like, you know, all oh, the Republicans are just trying to find anything they can to impeach the president. That was almost verbatim what Republicans were saying of Democrats when they were going after Trump and still going after Trump. Uh, so here we are heading into the 2024 election. Is Trump going to be the Republican nominee? He's facing possible charges uh, in the in the January 6th probe, uh, let alone the, the Georgia probe uh, and the classified documents charges keep stacking up uh but uh there's a whole host of uh, candidates looking to uh unearth or unseat i should say uh the the former president as the top contender uh so we'll get to that next and take some of your phone calls at 217-629-7970 it's right here with wma walk Got a few more minutes here uh, for you to chime in on uh, which is more impactful, the evidence stacking up against the Bidens over pay to play uh, or the headlines that are stacking up against former President Donald Trump, 217-629-7970. But we do have indication of who the seven Republican hopefuls are making the cut for the first debate. This is going to be a debate uh, amongst uh, possibly Donald Trump. Ron DeSantis, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Chris Christie, plus uh, Doug Burgum. Who's Doug Burgum? He's a wealthy former software engineer. Um, but apparently uh, he announced a program to give away $20 gift cards um, as a critique of uh, President Joe Biden's handling of the economy, calling them Biden relief cards. Uh, and it went out to as many as 50,000 people in exchange for a $1 donation. So interesting to see that. But uh, apparently Trump has said that he is not interested in debating because he is the lead candidate. Uh, even after all of these headlines of, you know, the former president facing uh, you know criminal charges for how he handled documents or how he possibly handled, uh, you know, January 6th. Uh, Donald Trump is very much leading the field. Uh, and again, uh, you've got the Biden DOJ going after him with a whole bunch uh, seemingly some people may characterize as throwing the kitchen sink at the former president. Uh, but here we are with uh, ongoing uh, headlines and uh, the next debate coming up and that's going to be in Milwaukee uh, and that'll be August 23rd. Uh, and uh, you've got uh, uh, the debate between possibly, uh, and this is who's qualified, Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, 
Chris Christie, and Doug Burgum. Who's not qualified? This is fascinating. Mike Pence, the former vice president, he is not qualified for this debate. Asa Hutchinson, uh, two-term Arkansas governor, not qualified. Uh, Francis Suarez, Larry Elder, Perry Johnson, Will Hurd. Those are some of the individuals looking to get the GOP nomination that are not qualified for the August 23rd debate. So here we are. It's August 1st. Uh, in 22 days, we'll have the first Republican debate. Will Donald Trump take part in that? Uh, or is he going to be having to show up to court uh, ahead of uh, you know debate season and uh, deal with all of the, uh, the various charges that are being leveled against him um, by the Biden Department of Justice. While you've got House Republicans looking at allegations against Biden. Fly SPI Studios. Take the easy way out.